Hi everybody, Don the Mushroom Hunter here, and I am in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in the Lachino Islands, and just came across a very interesting fungus called chaga. You can see it growing here on this uh, white birch. It's sort of a very, very hard, amorphous, mass, I guess you could say. Technically, it's a sclerotium. The, uh, the actual mushroom that is produced by the chaga fungus um, doesn't emerge until after the tree is dead, and it's very rare to actually see. Uh, so I've never seen that. But chaga is also a little bit rare, um, depending on where you live. It only grows in um, areas that get pretty cold. So the, the farther north you go, the more likely you are to find it. Now there's a ton of, um, of history that chaga has uh, being used medicinally and for lots of other things, for tinder, for fire starting. Um, I've actually uh, burned it and it makes a very interesting smelling incense as well. But there are a lot of myths about chaga and this video is really to dispel those myths. I'm not even going to get into the medicinal aspects of this, or the supposed medicinal aspects of the chaga too much. Um, I'll put some links underneath this video as well as a link um, that is sort of a warning um, for consuming too much chaga with other, uh, if you're if you're using other like a sort of pharmaceuticals or other things, there are some uh, issues there. So I'll put a link to that as well. But the myths of chaga, and here we go. Myth number one, chaga only grows on birch trees. False. Uh, chaga can grow on aspen, it can grow on several other types of trees as well. The reason people, I think, uh, the reason I think people confuse that is because uh, its supposed medicinal aspects are only present when harvested off of birch. And that is because the, uh, the, the betulinic acid, the betulin, the, a lot of the things that, uh, that uh, people are seeking to gain from uh, from chaga, they're not coming from the sclerotium itself. It's not really part of the fungus. It's because the birch bark and chunks of the birch wood get embedded in the sclerotium. So then when you're making a tincture, making a tea, those, uh, those compounds are getting leached out. It's not necessarily part of the fungus itself. Which leads us to myth number two. Myth number two is that chaga should uh, only be harvested in winter for whatever reason. So, and the myth is usually followed by something like the tree sap is flowing uh, more in, or the, the tree sl uh, sap slows down in the winter or something, and it's going to be more medicinal if it's harvested in the winter absolutely false. The fungus does not share a vascular system with the tree at all. The tree has nothing to do with supplying uh, uh, nutrients or anything that's going to come out in your tea to the fungus. It just doesn't happen. Um, uh, so basically the reason um, that chaga is probably harvested in winter is because it's easier to see when there are no leaves and when there's no foliage and when there's not much else to harvest. So, um, you know, it's kind of an easier thing to, uh, to find. It has nothing to do with the fact uh, that it's harvested in the winter though. Harvested at any time you want. The only thing that I've found uh, with a substantial sort of scientific backing to when you should harvest it is that it might contain a little bit more moisture in the summer, spring, or fall. So it might just take a, take slightly longer to dehydrate it or dry it out. But basically harvest it whenever you find it. Myth number three. If you harvest all of the chaga, it's not going to return. Uh, so we often see people um, talking about the fact that you need to leave some behind so it can continue to grow. 100% false again. This sclerotium, this mass, uh, this woody mass, is being produced by the mycelium growing underneath the bark. And basically, you can remove all of this, and the mycelium is going to continue to produce the chaga. Um, you can leave some, you can leave none. It's not really going to matter as far as that goes. So again, 
Myth number three, you need to leave some behind. Absolutely false. Take whatever you're going to use. Um, it will grow back, although slowly. All right, so those are the, the three main myths that I seem to come across quite a bit when, when um, uh, reading about chaga in online uh, articles, um, mostly blogs that don't give you any reference to uh, substantiate any of the claims that they make. Um, but how do we identify chaga? Well, um, chaga often gets confused for burls, and burls uh, can grow on... Um, lots of different trees, most hardwoods, um, I would imagine, maybe even conifers, and they can also grow on birch, so you might come across something that you might think is chaga, but is actually a burl. Um, for one thing, burls usually are, are fairly round, like they're, they're symmetrical for the most part. Um, chaga is usually never round. It, it is, again, sort of this amorphous shape of just chunkiness. Um, but what I'm going to do is try to get this off this tree. And this is going to sometimes require a, a mallet would be, would be a good thing. Um, but again, it's really hard. It's black on the outside. It almost looks burnt. The inside is going to be orange or red. If I was uh, to be able to, you know, uh, break this open, which I am not with my bare hands, it might be a little bit more red on the inside. But that is chaga. And this thing actually weighs, this is pretty heavy for, for the, uh, the size of it. You know, you, when you see this thing, the first time I found chaga, I thought it would be light, almost like cork, but it's actually quite heavy. Um, again, a lot of that is moisture and will um, obviously evaporate when this gets dehydrated. Um, so again, whether or not, you know, whether or not we're, we're going to buy into the supposed medicinal aspects of chaga, I still use this to make sort of a coffee or tea because it tastes really good. Uh, what I found is that um, you don't want to make you don't want to use it traditionally how you would make coffee or tea by just steeping it for a few minutes or running it through, um, you know, like a drip coffee maker. It's not going to get very flavorful. It'll be really black and dark like coffee, but it's going to be very weak. What you're going to want to do is simmer it um, or, or like you know, on a low boil. Uh, for a while and so what a lot of people do is just throw a whole chunk like this into a, a pot um, cover it and just kind of simmer it for I don't know 20 30 minutes or longer and you're gonna get a really deep flavor almost almost like coffee with without the the bitterness that some coffee can have it's actually quite nice uh, but you could also you know chop this up grind it up and and use it you know more um, you know as a powder and that will kind of, you'll, you'll get a little bit more out of it that way because there's a lot more surface area, um, you know, exposed to your water. Um, and a lot of people that actually would boil a chunk like this would use it more than once. So you could boil it, dry it out, use it again, um, you know, basically until it, it doesn't produce that sort of dark uh, liquid that you're looking for. So anyway, again, a very interesting fungus. Um, and a, 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 lot of, a lot of interesting things out there. Do your own research as far as, you know, the medicinal aspects of this. But if you are in the northern areas, and, um, you know, I live in Ohio. I've never seen or found chaga in Ohio. I've seen it reported from there. But it's just not cold enough for it to be super prevalent. Um, and again, we're in the upper peninsula, peninsula of Michigan um, and been looking at birch trees uh, hundreds of birch trees over the last week and this is really the first living chaga that I found found a little chunk yesterday that was all dried up and, um, and it was I think it was on a dead tree anyway um, so uh, so just keep your eye out there's there are quite a few um, of these actually up this tree starting to burst out of the wounds here so this tree is going to continue to produce chaga for a while um, the last thing about chaga is that it's um, it's parasitic, so it is killing this tree. It's actively killing the birch tree um, by parasitizing it, and eventually will kill the tree. So um, again, a lot of people sort of feel that it's this magical thing, and you need to leave it behind to help the tree. 
regardless of how much chaga you harvest, this tree is a goner. It, nothing you can do is going to save the tree from the, uh, from the mycelium parasitizing it. So you might as well uh, enjoy it while you can find it. Anyway, that's chaga. Um, I'm Don the Mushroom Hunter. Happy hunting. <laughs>